Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make it in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it up. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. And a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with the lower second and third stories shall thou make it. Praise God. You may be seated. Sorry, I know it's a lot of reading. I know it's a lot of reading. So, God looked down on what he had made. He looked down on all the earth he had made, the man that he had put here. And the Bible says that he repented him that he made man. That they were so wicked and the weakness was always upon their heart and upon their mind and upon everything they'd done. They repented God that he made them. So he decided that he was going to clean the earth of all mankind and, and all the flesh that was on the earth. And he was going to do this by blood. We all know the story. But my point of it is he comes to Noah. The Bible says look at the 8th verse there. It says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, out of everybody that was on the earth, <coughs> Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, through that Noah was perfect in his generations, it says, and he found this grace through God's eyes, and God decided that he was going to save so many men. He was going to save so much flesh, and he was going to do it through Noah. He had a salvation plan that he was going to set for Noah and his family and this flesh of the, that he was going to save off the earth. The animals, two of each kind. And he was going to save them by this ark. All because Noah had found grace in God's eyes was through Noah and his family going to be blessed. But I want you to know something. God shared his salvation plan with Noah just as he shared his salvation with me and you. But Let's look at what happened. He told Noah, this is what I want you to do. I want you to build this ark. <coughs> I want you to build it 300 cubits long. I want you to build it 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. I want there to be three stories in this ark. There's going to be three floors in this ark. I want you to put a window in the top. I want you to put a, a door in the side that exposed all three floors. I want you to cover the inside and the out with pitch. Pitch is kind of a tarry substance that they use to seal things. I want you to cover it inside and out. I want you to build room to the inside of it. And he gave Noah this salvation plan. And he told Noah that he was going to save him and his family. Now, he's gave you and me a salvation plan today. He's already gave that. Jesus came and died on the cross for our salvation. He paid the price that me and you couldn't pay. So, he gave Noah the salvation plan. But I want you to notice something. Do you realize the sheer magnitude of this boat? This ark that Noah was going to have to build? Can you possibly imagine? Now, they've made one somewhere in the lower end of Kentucky now. They're supposed to be visible on all sides. I'd like to go see it. I want to lay eyes on it. Because somewhere... I was doing the math, I was looking at everything, and it looks like that the ark was somewhere around 510 feet long. Now that's a football field and a half long. That's a big ark. Do we go? It was somewhere around, it had 50 feet tall from the ground to the top of it. 50 feet higher than a four story building. It had three floors in the inside. <coughs> <coughs> As I studied this, I realized that the storage space in the inside of it, according to what I was studying, was somewhere around what 450 standard semi-trailers could haul. 450 standard semi-tractor trailers could haul. This was not a little boat. So God gave Noah a salvation plan. But I'm going to, if 
impressed something on you this morning. He said, in your salvation plan too. But just as Noah could not stop with that salvation plan, me and you can't stop with that salvation plan. He may have saved you, praise be to God, but you still got things to do. He gave Noah the plan for the ark, but Noah had to build the ark. And I want to tell you something. I started looking up how long it possibly could have took you to build it. And scholars are different on this. They've got different thoughts. Some people say somewhere between 50 and 70 years. Some people think somewhere between 70 and 100 years is what he worked on the ark. But my point of the matter is, as I thought about the sheer size of this ark, how much that one man done, praise God, for his salvation. How, how hard he worked for the salvation of him and his family. I want you to know something this morning. God gave you a salvation plan in here this morning. But honey, won't you get it? You can't sit down and be still. It's not over once God saves you. You just got to start living. God gave directions, praise God, to Noah on what to do with the boat. He's given directions, praise be to God, for me and you on what to do with our lives. He tells us, praise God, to be holy, for I am holy. Man, people don't want you to preach on holy no more. You say, I can't live it. Praise be to God, I can't either. But through and by Jesus Christ, we all can obtain it. Praise be to God. It's got to be something that we work at. It's got to be something that we suffer through. It's got to be things that we get up and we don't want to work on it. I want you to know something this morning. I didn't know I'm probably going to have a video day. And he thought, I don't want to work on it today. My head hurt. My back hurts. I'm tired. I want to lay in bed today. But Noah knew something. He knew that salvation plan that God had put in place was dependent upon him finishing that ark. Your salvation this morning that God's given you is dependent upon you doing what God tells you to do. Now, if Noah would have built the ark any other way, you know what I mean? There was never a, there was never a boat to go by before that. There was never a vessel to go by before that. He didn't know what it was. Noah had to build this ark because God told him how to build it. God gave him the imagination on how to do it. God gave him the specific details on how to build this ark. And Noah had to build this ark just the way God told him to build it. Now, if he would have put the window on the bottom instead of the top, it would be catastrophic. Would it not? Amen. If he would have maybe built two floors, two stories in the inside of it, instead of three, he might not have room for all the animals. Right? Yeah. If, if he hadn't had the right amount of food, then they would have started that somewhere along the way. Everything had to be bottled. If he didn't put the pitch inside that out, they probably would have leaked, would have sunk. The point I'm trying to make to you this morning. Is God gave him a salvation plan with that ark. And he told him, he said, here it is. This is what I want you to do. And you're going to do this. And then you'll imagine this. Every day that he worked on it. Every day that he worked on that salvation plan. I'm sure there was somebody there that made fun of him. That thought he was crazy for building it. There's going to be somebody every day that's going to look at you and think there's something wrong with you because you don't act like the rest of the world acts. They're going to think there's something wrong with you because you walk away when they start to tell their dirty jokes. You get up and turn the TV on when it turns to something, praise God, that you don't want to see. When you get out of the movie theater and you walk out because there's something on the, TV, on the film that you don't want to look at, they're going to think you're crazy. They thought he was crazy too. I'll guarantee you they thought he was crazy. But he knew what God told him. God told him, I'm going to give you instructions. I'm going to give you an ark. And it's going to be your salvation for you and your family. And it was just because he was a just man. That's the reason why God chose him. What does that tell me about me and my family? Everybody has to live for themselves. I'm not saying that. But you think that the people who live for God you think their families ain't blessed too because of it? Of course they are. You think God don't look at that? There's not a doubt in my mind that I made it through half the stuff I made it through in my life because I had a little gray hurt mama that did her knees and prayed for me and said, Lord, watch over him. Protect him. Keep him safe, Lord. Get him through this day, Lord. Get him through that, Lord. Please keep him safe while we're doing surgery on him, Lord. Watch over him every day, Lord. Amen. I'll be honest with you. You think I still don't get that? 
I know my little grandpa mom is still bowing to her knees and prays for me. There's days since I've been pastor at this church. I just don't feel right before I come in here. Something ain't right. And if something ain't right in my world, you can come in here, something ain't right in your world, you can sit on these pews and nobody knows. If I come in here, something ain't right on my world, everybody knows. Everybody knows. So I worry, it worries me. I'm not perfect, I'm like you. I made mistakes, I failed. I'm not perfect. So it worries me. You think how many times I've stopped at my mom's on the way by and said, Mom, pray for me this morning. I'm having trouble this morning. Pray for me. Let God bless me this morning. Because I know without those prayers, I'd never made it this far. You think that Noah's family was blessed because Noah was a good man in Christ's eyes. He found favor in God's eyes because God knew he would do whatever he told him to do. Have you found favor in God's eyes this morning? Would you do what God told you to do even if it wasn't easy? Now you think about it. If it was 50 years or 100 years, I don't know how long it took you to build this ark. The Bible's not specific. But either which one, to build an ark basically by yourself would be almost impossible, would it not? Now you think about the size of this ark, and I'm going to give you some more reading here. If you think about the size of this ark, because it was four of as I studied this. Now this is the build the ark in Florida and Kentucky, okay? So this ain't Noah's ark, this ain't Bible, this is how much it took to build that ark down there. Listen. Said the supporting logs in the center of the ark was three feet in diameter in their ark that they built. It was three feet in diameter and 50 foot long. Can you imagine what that all weighed? Can you imagine one little man trying to get that where it needed to be and get it set up? Now, I don't know if it was three feet round and 50 foot long, but it had to be something similar to hold the weight. It had to be something similar to build the ark. This one little man, as he went out, and he knew that his salvation was dependent upon it because he knew that God had told him, I'm going to destroy this earth with water. There's not going to be no life left on it. And you and your family is going to be safe if you do what I tell you to do. Let me tell you something this morning. God's made a plan for you too. And he's telling you, if you do what I tell you to do, you're going to be safe. And when your life's over on this earth, I'll give you a better place to go. I'll give you a heaven to go to. I'll give you a home, praise God, that another man ain't never laid in a bed. I'll give you a home, praise God, that was built for you. That's faith expressly for you. I'll give you a place to walk that's a street of God. But you have to do what I tell you to do. If Noah would have decided he was going to quit in year 25 of the 50 years span it took him to build it, or, the, or, or 50 years in the year of the 75 years it took him to build it, every time he took it. If he decided one day he was going to get up and quit, would the ark have been done? No. Would the ark have floated? No. And would the salvation plan have worked? No. And him and his family would have perished. God knew no. And he knew him when he called him to do it. He knew he would do what he told him to do. He knew he would do exactly what he told him to do. This is what God's called me and you to do. Not to do half of what he told you to do. Not to do a portion of what he told you to do. But to do all that he told you to do this morning. I know it's not the most popular preaching. My wife gets on to me sometimes over this. I know it's not the most popular preaching. I know you don't want me to step on your toes. I know you don't want me to get up here and harp on you to live better, live better, live better. But if Noah hadn't done his job every day, the boat would have sunk. If you don't do your job every day, you can't be where God wants you to be. If you're not where God wants you to be, what does the Bible say about sin? He said, praise God, there'll be no sin that enters into heaven. Do you have to live close? Yes, you do. Are you going to be perfect? No, you're not. What's the difference? What makes up for your life when it comes to here and perfect year? What makes up for that? Jesus Christ. But you have to strive every day. 
Now I want you to know something about this bubble. Listen here. He says this. He said, make me an ark and go for it. This is 14, verse 14. Make me an ark and uh, go for it. The rooms shall thou make it an ark. And thou shalt pitch it with them without. <coughs> with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50, and the height of it 30. And the window shall thou make to the ark, and the cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark, and listen to this part, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with the lower, second, and third story shall thou make it. Now, of all the things that he put in this ark, this was an ark of salvation. This was an ark that God told him, this is the way I'm going to save what amount of flesh I'm going to save. This is the way I'm going to save it through this ark. The most important thing of this whole ark was the door. If he had built the whole ark and built it to exactly God's specifications and he had to place the door, they didn't know where to get in. Your salvation plan required a door. Jesus Christ was your door. Yeah. Jesus Christ this morning was the door to your salvation. He was the door to your heart, praise God. He was, praise God, the open that you were going to go through. Not just then, but now. It, praise God, if you can't get it, if you're going to get to heaven, it'll be through by the blood of Jesus Christ. It'll be through by that door that Jesus Christ is. Same way with that ark. If you hadn't, if there had not been no door in the side of it, there'd been no way to get in. And the ark, the waters would have came, and the ark would have blown up. And the people would have been left on the outside. God knew that. He knew that then. He knew that when he sent his son Jesus to die on the Calvary. He knew that. Now let's get back to the days that everybody walked by as Noah was building this. There was a lot of days that he worked on this fire stuff. I can't even imagine how he pulled these logs, how he built them, really with his bare hands. Tools was minimal. We have lots of tools nowadays. It would still be very hard for one man to build that nowadays. You think about what it was then. How hard he worked on it. Let me give you another, let me give you another little tidbit about the ark in Louisville, or I mean Lord in Kentucky. It says, they put 3.1 million board feet. 3.1 million board feet. Now, if y'all don't know what a board foot is, that's 12 inches wide by 12 inches long. Each board foot is, and it's an inch thick. They put 3.1 million board feet to construct that ark. Noah done the same thing. He didn't have all the tools they had. He didn't have a, a planer that planed it down. He didn't have a, a big machine that ripped the logs. He done everything by hand. What kept him going? What kept him going? The sure thought that God had told him, praise God, I'm going to give you this plan, and this is going to save you. What's going to keep you going in here this morning? Is it going to be your preacher that preaches to you? I hope not. I hope not. What's going to keep you going in here this morning for Christ? What's going to keep you motivated, keep you moving? I hope it was the same thing that kept Noah moving. The sure thought that God said, I'm going to save you. But this is what you're going to do for me. This is what you're going to do. You're going to face days that it's going to be hard for you. You're going to face days that you're going to die. You're going to face days, praise God, that you get up and you don't feel like working. You're going to face days that you'd rather just lay in bed. But praise be to God, if you want to come to where I am, you're going to do this, this, and this, and that's just the way it is. And I hope that when you look in the inside of you, that's your motivation this morning. What's your motivation to live right? Let's think about this. Other than your salvation, if Noah hadn't been living where he's supposed to be living, God would, he wouldn't have found favor in God's eyes. If he hadn't found favor in God's eyes, what would have happened? He would have been one of the ones that was on the outside of the boat. You have found favor in God's eyes this morning if you're saved. Did you realize that? You have found favor in God's eyes. What a blessing it is to know that you found favor in the Lord's eyes this morning. That, praise be to God, there's going to be a lot of people that never make it to heaven. But you have found favor in God's eyes this morning. You, you, praise God. Little old you, whoever you are. I don't care if you're rich and you want it so fast you can't get it in your pocket. I don't care if you're so poor and your hands stick through the holes in your pocket. Praise be to God, if you have Jesus Christ in here this morning, you've got everything. 
Amen. You still found faith. You're alive this morning. He favored you if you wouldn't have got up this morning. Do you realize that this morning? How many mornings? No, I didn't do all of that. You see, Joe would have finished that whole lesson. He would have. He would have tabulated that up and counted it up, and he would have known exactly how many hours he put in on that thing. Probably. I ain't that good. Enough. I couldn't remember if I did. But can you imagine the hours that no one went out and worked on that Now, whatever me and you face in this world, and I don't know what it'll be, there have been people in this church that have some horrific things. And there have been people in this church that probably ain't faced a lot of anything. And you wonder what's the difference? I don't know. The Bible says that around on the just as well the unjust. I don't know what the difference is. But I can tell you this. If you're a child of the king, you have found favor. You found favor. You're going to be on the ship. You're going to be on the boat. Jesus Christ said that he, praise God, was the Lord. Look. Look in the book for John. The book of John, 10th chapter, 7th verse, start the 7th verse, I think. You may put it up for you here. The book of John, 10th chapter, start in the 7th verse, this is Jesus. Then said Jesus unto the other again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep, he said. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. That massive door on the side of that park. Can you imagine how wide it was open? I know it was enough to make three stories high because it said to leave three stories exposed. So you can see all three stories through that boat. With that off the world. That was a big boat, big door. I'm not you because it was a huge boat. That was a big door. Jesus is a big God. He's that big door this morning. He's standing wide open still yet. And he's still calling. Come unto me. Come on, I'll give you rest. When he got time, God called Noah. He told him, he said, you and your family get in the boat. Take your stuff, get in the boat. Get in the ark. And he did and he got in the ark. And God broke loose the waters from heaven and from the, the wells of the deep, it said. And he broke them loose. And the water started to come upon the earth. And God shut the door. He didn't say man shut it. He didn't say he gave directions on no one how to crank that big door up. No, sir, he didn't. It said that God shut the door. I want you to know something this morning. God's opened the door for salvation for each and every one of you this morning. But I don't come a time that, praise be to God, that that big door is going to shut. It's going to close. And just like the people on the outside of that ark that may have run to him when they realized the water was about knee deep, or may have been waist deep, and they were wading out to the boat, and they realized that we need to be on that ship. I bet there was fingernails tore in the side of the boat that was trying to get the door open so much. It's unfilling what you could have heard if you had been there. The screaming, the begging, the pleading. But when God shuts the door, it's shut. When God does something, he does it. He don't do nothing halfway. He left the door open just as long as he could. And it come a time when he said, enough's enough. It's got to be closed. It's going to be what I say it's going to be. There's going to come a time when this big door is going to close that we know is Jesus Christ. There's going to come a time when it's going to be too late for you to make it into the ark. There's going to come a day. Where do you stand this morning? Are you in the ark waiting on God to close the door? Or are you standing on the outside waiting for water to get tangled in? I can't answer that this morning. But you can. You know where you stand this morning with Christ. You know if you're on the inside or if you're on the outside of that heart of salvation this morning. If you're a child of Jesus this morning, I don't have to tell you you're a child of Jesus. 
And if you ain't, I'm going to have to take you that either. Matter of fact, ain't my place to take you that either. It's a personal walk between you and Christ. But I can promise you, because of big loving arms one day, it's going to be finished. And he's going to call his children home. And this world's going to be destroyed again. This time it won't be no water. The Bible talks about fire. A fire so hot, that, so hot that it says even the elements will melt. The rocks will melt and run out of the place. When he comes back to get his children, it's done. It's finished. Are you ready to go home this morning? Now, I don't know you're walking here. I don't know where you're at. Lord, I know all of you in your sight. And I, I, I pray you are. I pray you're all ready to go and you're all standing on the inside of the ark and God's already said, you got to stand here. There is one more point I need to make before I quit. It comes to my mind as I was driving over here this morning. As no one worked on this ark, think about this. What was he doing every day that he worked on this ark? He was working for his salvation plan. Yes, he was. But what was he doing? I guarantee you there's not a morning he got up and he didn't wonder if today would be the day that God opens up the heavens and lets it land. I guarantee you there's not a morning that he was driving nails or whatever he put the part together with that he didn't wonder what would be the last day that I got to finish this thing. So what does it mean? It means that Noah was always looking up. He was always looking to Christ. He was always looking to God because he knew God made the last decision. You need to be found looking up to God this morning, just as well as no one was. No one didn't know when that last day was going to be, just like you didn't know. God didn't give him that much instruction. He just told him to build it. You don't know when your last day is going to be here. You have no clue. You have no clue when the last time he's going to call you to be saved. You don't have a clue this morning. But I can promise you, when God closes the door, it's closed. I can promise you. When you get before him one day, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess, and you're standing before him, I will guarantee you that you'll either, you'll either know that you're right, or you'll put you out of hell. One way or the other. Where do you stand this morning? You know what? As no work on this boat, I can't imagine how much how much sweat, how much heart that went into this boat. This morning, we should have just the same amount of determination in us as we He knew that if he didn't finish that boat, him and his family would have done it. Because he knew what God was going to do, what God did, he was going to do, but God was going to make us a pillow in this earth. We ought to know this morning that we don't make it into heaven. We're done. Please, don't let Satan lie to you this morning and tell you you've got another day. I don't know when God's going to close the door. I don't know when God's going to come back to his children. I've heard this preach also since I've been a little boy sitting on that pew in my home church. But I can tell you, I'm sure that God's closer now than he was yesterday. He's one day closer. Please, don't be found on the outside. Out of all the things you can mess up on in this life, don't mess up on that. Please don't be found without Christ. If you leave this walk of life without Christ, you'll never see heaven. Hell will surely be your home. Hell's not a place I want to live. It's not a place I want you all to live. You ain't not really live in there anyway. You're going to be suffering. <coughs> Please, this morning. As we stand, my goodness, it's awesome. He knew me and you would lack. He knew that we couldn't do it by ourselves. 
and you come and pay the price for me and you. Where do you stand with Christ? Whatever you guys are ready, go ahead.
I love you this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you that came out of our way this morning. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Brother Jim, can you just a little word for us this morning? 